Hello, before we begin today's video, can you please like, share, and subscribe to the channel because it actually helps expand the wonderful knowledge of NY and JPA weather and helps yours truly. So I really would appreciate it. So thank you, and as always, stay safe out there. Now let's get to today's video. Good morning. Welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, November 14th, 2025. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen Martino, CDM number nine. Well, you're going to be hearing a lot about the polar vortex over the next couple of weeks and likely through much of December. The polar vortex plunge, as I call this video, is going to have a major impact on our weather pattern. There's no doubt about that. And in fact, there may even be a complete disruption of the polar vortex. We'll talk about all that in a second. But always remember, this process involves a lot of volatility. So you don't want to jump the gun and declaring major winter storms or anything of that nature, especially with long range guidance. And I'll show you why as well on that. So first of all, here's what's happening currently. Okay, these are the observations provided to us by NOAA. And you can see the growth of the stratospheric warming starting to take shape here. We're getting bubbles, right? It's kind of bubbling up here uh, over the Pacific, over North America, over Asia. You're starting to see a little bit of a bubble here in the uh, in, in around the equator here. Uh, a little bit of cooling here around the mid-latitudes. So understand that... When we're seeing this evolution, remember at all times, the atmosphere is trying to find a balance vertically and horizontally at different levels, all right? So it's kind of like a tug of war here, evolving and taking place. And we already see influences of our stratospheric warming and what it can do. For example, throughout this summer, we had a lot of warming taking place around the northern Pacific and around the Aleutians, it led to a persistent what we call negative EPO pattern with a trough around the Aleutians, a ridge in the Gulf of Alaska. And our region, our eastern United States, had a series of deep troughs and uh, really limited in terms of any type of heat waves throughout the summer and into the fall, right? So then we had a bit of a relaxation. Now we're seeing this starting to redevelop. And what people are focusing on and most likely what you're seeing a great deal of is this depiction right here now you see this part right here okay if we verify this okay this little dip here would support winds reversing in the stratosphere which basically blows up the polar vortex okay it just basically drops a grenade into the whole circulation and so as a result it leads to a very weak uh, polar vortex and one where you get your polar and arctic air displaced towards the mid latitudes where we live rather than sitting over the arctic and this is pretty unusual to have this happen so early in the season now i have some theories on that part of that might be because of the rapid snow advance we saw in september and early october so maybe the process got kick-started a little bit early just a thought uh, but this kind of sets the stage. Let's just say, let's just assume that we don't get to this point. Let's say we get to this area right here, which is a very weak polar vortex. Still major news because this rapid weakening sets the stage for much of the Western winter because now you have to reestablish the polar vortex moving forward and strengthen it back to just near normal. Near normal is way up here, right? So near normal polar vortex would lead to some shots of colder air, some high latitude blocking. So you have to work your way all the way through that. And again, this would start to impact for early December. So then you'd have that theme working all the way through December and into January. So you see why a lot of people are focusing on this. This will have a significant impact on our weather pattern. But it also opens up a lot of chaos because much like when you try to break a, a glass ball, right? on concrete and you, you just slash it with a hammer right well the pieces go all over the place and how they go all over the place will tell us a lot about how the pattern evolves and storm potential it just leads to a whole lot of chaos and so i am warning you don't jump on to model guidance showing winter storms 10 15 days out most likely those are ghosts most likely they will disappear so you know, anyone posting a snow map even seven days out, use caution, okay? 
So this is what is starting to take place here. Now, what does this look like in terms of our model guidance? Well, this is generally what we're going to be watching here. So you can see where we have our warm pockets right now, and this is at 10 millibars. And you can see this whole evolution taking place here. Warming continues around, this is called Canadian warming, usually leads to a lot of stretching, a lot of displacement, and boom, there is our major stratospheric warming. And again, this has been showing up in a model guidance perpetually. This isn't like a one and done model solution to, hey, this flipped and now we're getting all excited about it. This has been showing up in the guidance repeatedly and building repeatedly. So if this was a situation where we just saw one model solution or suddenly jump to this, I'd be very skeptical. We've been seeing this build up, not for days, for weeks in the model guidance. And now we're getting closer and closer to where we can actually see, we're in a period of time where we can actually see the trigger point of this whole process taking shape so we can gain more confidence that yes, this will happen. What we don't know is how it impacts the 500 millibar pattern. So we are seeing a lot of changes, but typically when you see this type of setup, it is going to get chilly in December, okay? There's very little doubt on that. I'm expecting below normal temperatures. The question is, do we also have a lot of precipitation, moderate precipitation, and yet snow? So we're definitely going to be watching out for that. So uh, certainly a very interesting pattern. And here's my point in terms of model guidance. So this is the regular European guidance and we're going to go out to 15 days and you can see the high latitude block and beautiful negative NAO signature. Your negative EPO signature starts to take shape here. You're seeing the transport of colder air eventually. While this whole process is happening, the the Pacific jet stream, part of the polar jet stream, a branch of it, is going to be sending shortwave after shortwave through. So a lot of Pacific air. So we're not going to be uh, very cold Okay, we're going to be cool, okay, seasonable, right? But no major swings either way of towards Arctic air or well above normal temperatures. This is a very progressive pattern. But slightly above normal temperatures, talking again, like we're talking about the 50s here. Um, but as we get towards the end of this period, you'd probably focus on like, hey, there's a deep trough here. Well, let me show you this. This is the uh, AI guidance, and we'll go to 0Z. And you can see, same idea, but as we get further out, it starts to display different solutions here. Now, the reason why we're seeing different solutions here is because the this model guidance, the AI guidance, is handling these short waves a little bit differently. Instead of phasing everything on the West Coast, it kind of kicks everything out and keeps everything progressive and starts to really kickstart this whole pattern change much faster. Where you start to see heights really building around the Gulf of Alaska, into Alaska. Alaska is going to be heating up. You're getting your trough here around the um, the Western Aleutians. And of course, this sets up a cascade of polar and Arctic air masses down into the plains and heading towards the east as we get past Thanksgiving and move towards the last few days of November and into December. Which one is right? You can make a case for either. Okay, I'm sure many people will say AI is a new toy, so therefore it's got to be right. It may be right. The point I'm trying to make is that the interaction of short waves is going to be a major story here. So don't get ahead of yourself. Take one step at a time and don't uh, get ahead of yourself with uh, model solutions several days out. In the meantime, we got some activity around here. So right now we have a trough that is passing through very very quiet weather conditions other than that a lot of scattered cloud cover around the region isolated shower here and there like up towards the poconos and catskills temperatures in the lower to mid 30s over the northern interior upper 30s to lower 40s in the suburbs lower to mid 40s in your urban areas and you can see on the weather tap radar and surface map just a few isolated rain and snow showers around the region no real organization to any of this uh enhancement a little bit by the Great Lakes as well, but again, nothing really major. So it's going to be overall a pretty quiet day. On the water vapor satellite pitch, you can see this broad trough here, right? So this broad trough is sending short wave after short wave through, but as it's lifting out, this feature, this upper level high pressure system is building in. So what does this look like in terms of the Infrared satellite picture? Well, let's pull that up. Again, just want to show real fast. Hey, tropics, very quiet. 
no concern. I don't expect anything through the end of November. I think we're done down there. Uh, but when we zoom in a little, little bit closer to home, these conditions right here will be heading towards us for tomorrow. And then this warm front slash cold front will be moving through the region tomorrow night into Sunday, opening up the threat for showers and our shot of polar air addition time for Sunday afternoon. So what does that look like on the 500 millibar pattern here? Uh, again, we have what's called uh, vertical velocity here. That's what we're looking at. Rising motion in the atmosphere for tomorrow. It's going to be pretty quiet. There's our ridge axis setting up quiet weather conditions through tomorrow afternoon. And then tomorrow evening, you see this rising motion in the atmosphere. That's going to be your scattered showers tomorrow evening. And then Sunday morning with the cold front that follows through with more lifting. And then we get very quiet for the rest of the week, but a lot of substance, a lot of sinking air through much of next week. So next week generally is going to be pretty quiet, but a bit chilly. Why? Well, let's take a look at 850 millibar temperatures on sun Saturday night to Sunday. It's going to be warm. So you get this nice warm air transport and then look at the cold air just cascade in right on Sunday afternoon. So what does that lead to? Well, when we look at our temperatures, we start off with the warmest conditions on Sunday, basically in the early morning hours, talking about like 6 a.m. probably going to be your warmest time period, temperatures in the 50s. That's when you look at your phone or whatnot, you might see, hey, it's going to be in the 50s on Sunday. No, it won't. Because when you're actually heading out, let's say to a, Jets, a Giants game, an Eagles game, something of that nature, your temperatures will be free falling through the 40s and into the 30s. And while that is taking shape, you also have 850 millibar winds here getting mixed down into that. So you're talking about sustained winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusts at times pushing up to maybe 30, 35 miles per hour. So if you're heading outside, bundle up because you're going to need it with temperatures th falling through the 40s and into the 30s or strong winds it's going to feel more like the upper 20s to mid 30s so let's dive into this forecast get a little bit more detail for today mixed sun clouds maybe an isolated rain or snow shower especially over the interior high temperatures in the mid to upper 40s over the interior and along the coast upper 40s to lower 50s in the uh on the i-95 corridor for tonight into tomorrow morning High pressure will build in, look for sky cloud cover with temperatures falling off into the upper 20s to lower 30s over the northern interior, mid 30s along the coast and in your suburbs, mid to upper 30s in your urban areas. For tomorrow afternoon, look for increasing cloud cover but tranquil conditions otherwise with high temperatures in the lower to mid 50s on the I-95 corridor and along the coast, upper 40s to lower 50s over the interior. Then we get our warm front moving through on Saturday evening, I say after 7 p.m., on through the overnight periods with scattered showers. Not looking for anything heavy, maybe a, a tenth to a quarter of an inch overall for most of the region with this warm front and cold front following through. But on Sunday morning, your low temperatures are going to be very much towards midnight. So you're looking at upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior, mid to upper 40s in your suburbs, upper 40s to lower 50s in your urban areas. Your high temperatures are going to be around 6, 7 a.m. where you're going to have high temperatures in the lower to mid 40s uh, over the northern interior, upper 40s to lower 50s in the Delaware River Valley, lower to mid 50s along the coast. And then temperatures free fall the rest of the day with clearing skies and windy conditions through the 40s. So Sunday's going to be a bit of a chilly day in the afternoon, that is for sure. So you're going to need a jacket if you're going to be outdoors. Now Sunday night into Monday, we have a series of troughs moving through, sky cloud cover. Again, can't rule out an isolated flurry. Low temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s over the northern interior. Lower to mid 30s in your suburbs, mid to upper 30s in your urban areas. Monday afternoon, sky cloud cover. Again, can't rule out a flurry or two over the uh, higher elevation, Poconos, Catskills. High temperatures will range from the mid to upper 30s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast. On Tuesday and Wednesday, high pressure will be in control with scattered cloud cover. Look for low temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s over the northern interior, lower to mid 30s along the coast, and high temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior and mid to upper 40s along the coast. On Thursday, high pressure starts to give way with scattered cloud cover expected. Look for low temperatures in the 
lower to mid 30s over the interior mid to upper 30s in your suburbs upper 30s to lower 40s in your urban areas high temperatures will rebound into the upper 40s to lower 50s over the interior and along the coast mid 50s along the i-95 corridor and on friday a warm front will lift through with a mix of sun and clouds and a few isolated to widely scattered showers especially over the interior look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior mid 40s along the coast and high temperatures in the mid to upper 50s over the northern interior and lower to mid 60s along the coast that is your premium public video forecast discussion for this week have a wonderful day and as always stay safe out there thank you for watching today's video i really do appreciate it but if you want to help the channel out even more and myself of course you might want to check out premium consulting membership which provides amazing content and information that you get beyond the daily video that you see Monday through Friday. So what do you get? Well, you get updates every day in the premium dashboard, starting with, of course, checking out the latest winter forecast or other seasonal forecasts throughout the year, live coverage room where you can ask me questions live, and I respond usually within a few minutes. Also, the latest holiday updates, how the weather will impact that upcoming holiday. If you are into landscaping or you work in landscaping, should I say, you will get the latest details on whether or not rainfall will be a threat and impact your job. And of course, there is all the other content, the zoomed in impact map, the severe threat analysis, long range thoughts, the premium consulting video, and also energy analysis, seasonal analysis, additional analysis when the storms get really tricky, winter storm overviews and when the tropics gets really active all of the updates including the individual storms and the overview as well and if you're a business owner we also have a specific uh impact uh, forecast for you guys as well your own weather map so let's take a look at the prices pretty fair $15 a month gets you all this information. If you're looking for a little bit of a discount, you can also have a yearly at $150 and quarterly at $60. And also, for all of you business owners out there, you have the ability to get your own web page, your own consulting analysis based on what you need every day in the morning, updated Monday through Sunday without any delay. And of course, you can call me up as well and have that one-on-one -on -one consultation. So all this and more at NY and JPA Weather. Thank you as always for being a subscriber and watching the videos, but if you're looking for a little bit more, this would definitely be one of the ways to do so. So in the meantime, stay safe out there.